If you were asking me whether there's a possibility that Cork City could be in a relegation battle this season, my answer would have to be yes. What's going on guys and welcome back to LOI TV. Now today we're going to be continuing our preview videos for the upcoming 2020 LOI season. Of course you looked at Bohemians in the last episode, so if you haven't seen that make sure to go check it out. But today we are going to be looking at Cork City. So yeah, let's jump right into it. Like I said previously, for these videos we're going to be breaking them into three kind of categories. The first one being how the team did last season. The next category is kind of going to be how they lined up last season compared to this season and how different their team is. And the final one is the aspirations that they should have. When talking about Cork last season, God, where do you even start? 2019 is definitely not a year that will go down in Cork City's history books. It was an absolutely woeful campaign that included three different managers and an eighth place to finish. For a club the size of Cork City, that did come as a surprise to most considering how they were doing in the years leading up to that. It was such a dramatic decline, but fans were kind of half expecting it. They weren't very impressed with the transfers leading into last season, and obviously the loss of their star man, Kieran Sadlier, really hit them hard. And yeah, very few of the players that they brought in really made any impact whatsoever. Experienced professionals and players that they had relied on in previous campaigns and their title winning campaigns and their cup winning campaigns, they were so poor um, last season and looked a shadow of their former selves. Three different managers couldn't really find the formula to push Cork up the table and sort their form out. The good news for Cork City fans is that their best form did come towards the end of the season and that was under current manager Neil Fenn. They got some huge wins over sides at the top of the table like Dundalk and Bohemians which can definitely give Cork fans some fresh hope and optimism going into the new campaign. How different will Cork City's team be from last season to this? It's kind of hard to um, like nail down a team that they had last season because they had three different managers as I said who all brought different approaches and styles to the Cork City team so they had a lot of chopping and changing throughout the season so it's kind of hard to nail down a set starting 11 that played for the majority of last year but we can just look at it from a rough perspective. Cork have had a huge turnover this season and I have to give credit to Neil Fenn for that he saw that there was a lot of dead wood in the squad He's not afraid to mix it up and uh, get his hands dirty. He's taken a bit of a risk, but I think it needed to be done. Cork's goalkeeper last season, Ty Groin, actually impressed a lot um, with some of his performances. And Cork City fans are actually sad to see him go. He moved on to neighbours Waterford and uh, Cork City brought in uh, goalkeeper Liam Bossine as his replacement. He'll compete with Mark McNulty for the number one jersey. Mark McNulty signed a new deal as a player kind of coach. McNulty is far, far past his prime now, I think. Um, and will be second choice to Bossine, but he is a good player to have in and around the group. And Liam Bossine, the former Irish Youth International, does actually have good pedigree. He's had spells with Nottingham Forest and Anderlecht, and I think the 23-year-old could be a good signing for Cork. In the fullback areas for Cork, Colm Horgan and Shane Griffin have both moved on. Horgan has moved to Derry City, and Shane Griffin has joined Stephen O'Donnell's exciting project at St. Pat's. At right back, Cork have brought in 20-year-old Charlie Fleming from Cove Ramblers. And at left back, Cork Cork will put trust in 20 year old youth academy graduate Ronan Hurley. He's a really attacking fullback, very good on the ball. He said to establish himself in the side for a good run of games towards the end of the season and he'll be looking to have a big 2020. At centre back, Cork are really, really weak. They've lost some big names in there uh, in recent kind of times, including Connor McCarthy, who went to St. Mirren, of course, Sean McLaughlin, who went to Hull City, and of course, Dan Casey, who left for um, Bohemians as well. They have brought in 21-year-old um, Rob Slevin from Waterford, who can play centre-back or left-back, but I think uh, Neil Fenn will be operating him as centre-back. He's been given the number four jersey, so that's one of those areas kind of covered. You also have the likes of 38-year-old Alan Bennett. He signed on for the new season as a player coach, similar kind of to McNulty um, in terms of what he's going to contribute for the season. And he, his experience is going to be crucial, considering there's so many inexperienced heads in and around them, um, that he's going to have to provide that leadership, really. Cork have also brought in 21-year-old Chiron Stabana. Um, he's a right-back or centre-back. And they brought him in on a loan deal from Wimbledon who'll provide some competition and cover in those areas. But surely Cork are still in the market for at least one more centre half. Now moving into the midfield, in terms of formation, I'm not entirely sure what Neil Fenn is going to look to do for the new season. And because of this, I'm just going to stick with a standard enough 4-2-3-1. With those two kind of central midfielders, Cork have lost a big name in Conor McCormack, who's been a huge 
part of their success in recent years, he's moved up up the country to Derry City. Now surely Gearward Marcy is one of the first names on the team sheet for this kind of area of the pitch. The 28 year old will be eager to put last season behind him and get back to his best. Beside him we could be likely to see Neil Fenn's very first signing Keane Coleman. He had a decent campaign with Pats last season but never really nailed down a starting spot and was ultimately let go by Stephen O'Donnell at the end of the season. The 23 year old who actually came up through Cork's academy certainly has a lot of ability and moving back home could be exactly what he needs to get his career really on the right track. And some breaking news as well, at the time of recording I'm not entirely sure if it's gone fully true yet but um, it looks like Cork City have actually signed another midfielder, Henry Ochin. He's a midfielder who plays for Wingott and Finchley and if he's brought in he'll add some extra competition in the midfield area. Now for the three kind of attacking midfield players, um, Cork City have lost a lot of players in this area coming in comings and goings um, in this department like the likes of having James Tilly on loan last season and they also lost like the players like Carl Shepard and stuff like that as well. Now for the upcoming 2020 season these three players um, are all quite versatile in their roles they can all kind of fill in in all three different positions and if Neil Fan really utilizes this and has them all moving around it could really cause a lot of problems for defenses. Starting off on the right hand side the new signing from Waterford Corey Galvin the 23 year old was always quite a consistent performer for Waterford never really standing out too much but always consistent enough. Through the middle in the kind of number 10 role I think is going to be new signing Dylan McLeade. The 24 year old had a fantastic season last year with Bray Wonders and was eventually named in the first division team of the year. There's absolutely no doubting this kid's ability. A very, very talented player that Cork City fans must be hoping. He's more focused on his football career than his DJing one. On the left hand side, a young player who last season showed lots of promise and towards the end under Neil Fenn started putting together some really good performances. 22 year old Darrell O'Connor has kind of turned into something of a fan favourite down with Cork. The former UCD man has everything you could really want in a winger. Pace, strength, ability on the ball, whether it be crossing or shooting. Um, and this season could be a really, really big one for him if he starts fast. Leading the line for Cork City this season, their new number nine, Connor Davis. The 21 year old, yes, 21. I had to check that a few times because he looks about 30. He makes the move from Derry City. He was unfortunate last season with Derry and um, with the likes of David Parkhouse, who's in really good form, kind of keep him out of the side. He couldn't really get a consistent run of uh, games together. So he definitely needed a fresh start. Cork did have a few striking options that didn't really work out last year. The likes of Graeme Cummins who uh, had a spell with them before going out on loan halfway through their campaign. And they brought in Marco Sullivan for the last half of the season. Um, and they've all these kind of strikers have left the club for the upcoming campaign. And Davis will be hoping he can have more luck in front of goal for Cork this season than the other lads they had last year. There are a lot of really talented youngsters coming up to the Cork Academy at the moment. I haven't mentioned them in this team because I'm not exactly sure if they'll be starting games or they could be, I'm not too sure, but there's a lot of really talented players such as Alec Barry, Keen Bargery and Bennion O'Brien Whitmarsh. Is it Bennion? Bennion O'Brien Whitmarsh? He looks like a good player. I think he's the under 19 player of the year last season. That's just to name a few as well. They have a lot of really talented youngsters coming through. Now in terms of aspirations uh, for the season, it's kind of tricky um, in terms of what to expect from Cork this year. A huge concern for me is the age of the group. There's a lot of very, very young players in this squad. There's not an awful lot of experience in it and that is a huge concern for me. As well as that, I do think they lack a lot of depth in key areas. And is Connor Davis gonna score enough goals? It's kind of unproven whether he will or not. So that's another kind of concern. If you were asking me whether there's a possibility that Cork City could be in a relegation battle this season, my answer would have to be yes. It's definitely a possibility. UCD have been relegated as you all know and Shelburne do replace them. So it's a much stronger side replacing a weaker team. So it's more of the blanket from last season. Um, that really made them feel comfortable of avoiding the bottom two. That's been removed from them this season. Nevertheless, this season is clearly one for development of players and stuff like that. For Cork City, they're not going to be expect fans can't really expect them to go and win the league. Neil Fenn does need time there to implement his ideas and his strategies. And um, with this, with the like the average age of that group, he needs time. The group of players at Cork City actually have potential to be fantastic. Whether they will all gel together and be able to play. Um, consistently at like a real man's level. A lot of them will be youngsters or first division players coming up into the Premier Division so whether they can play at this new level for the first time and really thrive in it remains to be seen. For me Gearward Marcy might be one of the most important players for this season. He's a key figure in this side and he needs to provide the leadership and guidance to such a young group and be able to really kind of drag them through the rough patches in this season that they will endure. If Cork City fans are feeling positive about the upcoming campaign they're probably envisaging a mid-table finish and finishing 5th or 6th in this difficult division 
would be seen as definitely a really, really good achievement in my eyes for such a young group of players um, in this Cork City side. Well guys, there you have it. What do you think? Am I well off the mark on this one? Or am I kind of being realistic about the situation? Especially if Cork City fans are watching this video, I want you to let me know how you're feeling ahead of the upcoming campaign down in the comments below. Hope you enjoyed the video guys. Please make sure to like, share, and most importantly, subscribe. Have a good one.